things you want to do when writing is that you want to be nice to your reader. Uh, you want your language to be such that uh, the reader doesn't have to really work hard to figure out what you mean. Um, you don't want to bore the reader or tire the reader or things like that. And so one of the ways to keep the reader in mind is to use efficient language. So when we're looking at making our language efficient, uh, we're looking at uh, using a minimum of words, uh, using words that are easily understood so that the reader uh, can get your meaning. Uh, and it means avoiding things that waste the reader's time. So we want to look at some of the things to avoid when you are writing. Uh, one area to avoid is cliches. A cliche is a word or a phrase that's been overused so very much that it's lost a lot of meaning. It may have been something very colorful before, but it doesn't really mean much anymore. And one of the ways to remember about cliches is to look at the origin of this word. This actually originally comes from French, um, and it means a lead slug. And it dates back to the early days of the printing press when the letters were molded out of lead and they were stuck together to form words and sentences and phrases in slugs. That these uh, cliches then were mounted in the wooden frame of the printing press. And so they'd print uh, their magazine or their newspaper or whatever they were printing. Then when the print run was done, they would take all of the cliches out of this frame, all of these lead slugs, and put them into a pot and melt them down and recast them. However, to save some work, they knew there were certain words and phrases that were going to be used over and over again. And so instead of uh, melting those down, the printing press people would uh, save those aside and keep them and not melt them down. And so that's the origin of the word cliché. It means something that's been so overused that the printers didn't bother melting it down. Now, in English, uh, we have a lot of clichés um, where if it's a phrase that's so well known that you can complete it without um, any problem and everybody knows how it's going to end, uh, a lot of comparisons like busy as, a, uh, you'll usually hear either bee or beaver. Um, we might have uh, smokes like a, like a, uh, and people we will usually know that's chimney, or drunk as a, uh, and in America that that one's completed with skunk. Uh, not that I've ever met a drunk skunk, uh, but for but it rhymes. Uh, so <laughs> that one doesn't even really mean anything. Uh, in Britain, this, by the way, is actually drunk as a lord. Uh, so uh, another interesting one. Now, there is one that's a cliche in most of the rest of the US that's not a cliche in uh, New Mexico, which is sober as a. Uh, most of the world knows that as sober as a judge. Uh, we don't usually see sober judges in New Mexico, so it would be drunk as a judge here. And it's not just these comparisons, but there are other words and phrases that you may use uh, that get used a lot. Um, for example, uh, by the way. Things like that, um, that's one that gets abbreviated on the internet. Anything that gets abbreviated on the internet uh, is something that's so well known people already know what it means. So BTW, everybody knows by the way. Um, so those are uh, cliches. Another cliche that people use, a lot of phrases, uh, better late than never. Um, so we have these cliches, and we want to avoid those. Now, related to cliches are things that I call waffle words.
Waffle words, again, are things that are sort of filler. They add words without adding meaning. Things like, in my opinion, or um, I believe. These words, again, don't add anything to your paper. Um, the paper is already going to be your opinion and what you believe anyway, so you don't need to put those extra words in. They don't add any meaning. And in fact, they may um, detract from your meaning. Because these phrases, things like this, they come across as apologizing for what you're saying. Uh, you're kind of saying, well, this is just my opinion and it's not worth anything. Don't do that. Be confident in what you say. You don't have to apologize for your position. Um, that's something that, uh, that uh, you can be firm with and be solid about. Another type of language that can be counted as inefficient is pretentious language. Which is to say, using lots of big words without necessarily being sure the big words mean what you really want them to mean. Some people seem to think that good writing, to be good writing, it has to have lots of big words. You have to sound important. But if the big word you're using isn't the word you really mean, you're going to make your paper weaker and not stronger. Uh, and I have a favorite word that I use to describe pretentious language. It's sesquipedalian. And this comes from Latin. Sesqui means one and a half. Ped means foot, or in this particular case, it'll mean a syllable. And so sesquipedalian means using half again as many syllables as you need. It's being excessively uh, fancy in your words. Now, there are some cases where you might use pretentious language as kind of a way of inserting humor. Uh, for example, you may do that to get rid of some cliches, uh, to make it more humorous. One example of that would be if I've had a really frustrating day at work, and I come home and my husband says, well, how was your day? And if I say I spent it in pursuit of undomesticated waterfowl, I have here is a way to avoid a cliche. Um, if we look at this, uh, you may not have figured it out yet. We have pursuit, which means chasing something. Uh, we have waterfowl, which means birds that swim on lakes and ponds and things. We have undomesticated, meaning it's wild. So if I was in pursuit of undomesticated waterfowl, uh, what I'm really saying is I was on a wild goose chase. So that's one way you can avoid cliches. Uh, by using pretentious language. Do it on purpose for humor. Uh, don't do it just because the big words sound impressive. Another form of inefficient language to watch out for is repetition. You don't want to repeat yourself because the reader will find that tedious. Uh, for example, if I have a bunch of sentences that are all the same, I might have something like, the truck was big, the truck was red, the truck was in my way. So what I have here are three sentences that are very, very repetitive because they've repeated the truck was, the truck was, the truck was. We can actually uh, change this sentence to improve it uh, by getting rid of some of the extras. So we can say the truck was big, comma, red, comma, and in my way. And so now we've avoided the repetition. We've actually cut half the words out of this passage. And we've made it easier for the reader, a less tedious, more direct.